system. So we had to write some emergency rules and put them out there because the feedback from the surveyors is they just didn't know what to do. So we did that in, in about a week and we cut our consultation period down very, very short, but got it out there so the community could move on and the, the surveyors could carry on. So I might ask our panellists if they've got any points that they would like to raise as discussion among, among the audience uh, before I raise a few. I'll, I'll, um, I'll raise one. Um, uh, what, what, you know, when you sit up here, as a few of you have done in the past, you're really aware that this is all this collective intelligence in the room. And so we've talked about some examples of um, um, engaging citizens, but uh, I, know, I know us and I'm sure other people in the room if anyone's out there and uh, got an example, how how a really authentic or innovative way, I think that all of us would be interested, because this is meant to be an interactive session, so this is the time for people to, you know, to, to uh, this, is your, this is the time for you. <laughs> Counter examples and nuances yeah. to some of the themes, especially the theme of this workshop, which is the idea of a process, a dynamic process of engagement, and rather than a one-off process as Don has raised the issue. So if people have those kinds of instances, even counter instances, uh, that we can use to have a discussion, that would be, uh, now's a good time to raise them. And, and I'm especially interested, um, James just talked about the earthquake and there's some really interesting experiences and all the barriers dropping away uh, in, in uh, Christchurch and the agencies working together and I know Queensland's gone through something that's really similar. So I'd be interested in people's reflections on uh, working with the community and, and that kind of environment if people have got um, experiences here in the room. Just, just, just wait for the mic if you can, Gary. Thank you. Great, thank, thank you. Thank you. Gary McKinnon, Emergency Services, New South Wales. Just on that last comment around the, the broader emergencies that have happened in the, the two countries and across Japan as well. Um, some of the observations I've had in my organisation when working with other organisations, so it's not talking with community and programs for community and with community. It's more about the interoperability and cooperation across agencies for community, both in a response perspective, but also further up the, the you know, the, the river, I guess, prevention and preparedness perspective. Uh, as soon as those major crises seem to occur, a lot of the, you know, I'll, be careful of the friendship, but a lot of the crap that sometimes comes into the room and the, you know, the way people often have a little bit of patch, uh, you know, a little bit of probably not professionalism uh, to some extent, it all fell away. It just washed away and everybody will work, work together and continues to do so now. And I think that's a bit of a turning point for this, uh, for an emergency service perspective. So I hope, you know, maybe out of that sort of context, there's other opportunities for community out of that sort of major disaster perspective, that makes sense? Yeah. We've got no, another comment, I think, up the, there. Uh, John Fitzgerald from Victorian Health Promotion Foundation. We work in the preventative space, so we very rarely have a crisis of prevention, um, <laughs> except if people can't get their beer or something like that. Um, What's, I'm just picking up on the last comment about crisis, that crisis can be a really productive moment and it creates a, you know, a kind of point in the narrative where an organisation can launch somewhere. Um, in the absence of crisis, what do you use to actually get an organisation into that space, to thinking about engaging with um, their citizenry or their stakeholders or whatever? Um, you know, what do you use in the absence of crisis? What, what have people from the audience who've experienced this come up with to, in the absence of a crisis, how do you engage this process? We've got one hand up. <laughs> Marty Alla from the Ministry of Social Development in New Zealand. Uh, we work in the preventative space too, and it's been really strange for me to find myself not only in the Christchurch earthquake, but in the middle of the picking up stuff after the Christchurch earthquake happened from a preventative point of view. But if I think back to before that, what we did is we tried to find, we worked a lot with communities to try and find a compelling goal that everybody could really get very excited about. And that's been a lot of the work we've done in the family, yeah. in the family services space. Um, and, and I guess that's, that's 
yeah, kind of my only answer to that one, really. Um, create a positive how you, crisis. How did you go about doing that? <laughs> Um, oh, we, you know, we, Jim knows a bit about this. We've, we've used all sorts of um, techniques. You know, there are, there are all sorts of ways of planning um, that can bring a community together. In, in a sense, I'm not too fussed about which of the ways work um, or the, the techniques of, of common planning. I think the key things are that we have found are that the right people are in the room um, so that you have everybody who can make a difference to a problem. Um, so if you take the obvious, you know, one of the really big ones for us is teen pregnancy, for instance. Um, you know, not just, not just government makes a difference to this, there are a few other people involved. <laughs> um, and, yeah, so having the right people in the room and being really working to express the goal in a way that it, that it is important for people. Um, but after that, the same things kick in as I've found after the earthquake. You need a group of people who are really committed to keeping it going. Um, so we had all of this sort of excitement after the earthquake and people coming together and people saying we'd never go back to the old ways of working. And that's what I'm in fact going back to on Friday as a big meeting about how we'll never go back to the old ways of working. But God, we're having to work really hard to keep people on that page. Yeah, just to keep bringing them back and reconnecting them with, essentially it's that goal thing again. Nearly towards the end, but uh, we've got one comment up the front here before we go back up to John. Uh, Nikki Ross from the Department of Prime Minister and Cabinet. Uh, one way that we've actually used a Reform Council is to make sure that we protect their position within the, the not-for-profit sector, in that they're not too close to government and the things that they're doing aren't actually helping government with their um, reform agenda. Um, and two things that come to mind is that we're actually using them as the, the sounding board to make sure that the policy that we develop isn't actually having some unintended policy outcomes and they are the experts in the field so it's best to actually place it with them so we've got a range of people from solicitors and volunteering etc. Um, the other thing was that we're getting them to do the consultation so again they are the, the best people positioned to use their membership rather than us just post it out as another government consultation that we're running, they're actually using their memberships to get that process done. Just, just, a, sort of, just a sort of counter example George. Um, I've lived through many restructures, as most of you have too. And, and what, it's not just a crisis, it's, it's whether the people in the organisation think the leadership will carry through. Uh, if, they, if they doubt the commitment of the leadership or they think it's just cosmetic or that it's just spin or it's just to get through, they'll be, they'll, you know, it will not follow through. If they think the leadership is committed, and I'm not just talking about vision or strategic leader, but just simply commitment to do it. If they think that's there, then, then it will likely happen. And you can invent crises or you can manufacture crises or magnify them. Um, but that's an important point. What the, what the staff feel uh, their leadership is saying to them, what messages they're giving in their behaviour, the, the internal incentive structures, that, that's an important component of, of the change. Well, I think we'll wrap it up there.